Yeah, so Western, um, we kind of went into it more on the guy's side working towards the group. So we've had, we've got a bunch of upperclassmen, um, but with that we've had some weird class schedules. So we actually haven't had our top group be able to work out at all together this year. And so we kind of treated it a little bit more as a workout. And so um, just for reference, like Tony, um, started out at 520, which is relatively slow for him. So it's a five mile race, so 520 per mile. Um, same with our other top guys. So Tristan, uh, Jared, Trevor, um, our other top guy didn't race cause he's been sick. Um, but with that, we started out relatively slow, all packed up. And then the goal was to kind of progress as the race went on. And so I don't know what Tony was at two miles into the race. He was probably like 60th or 50th or something like that. And he ended up dropping down into the like 455 for his last mile, like 505, five flat, 455-ish. Yeah, 455 for his last mile. And so, um, which is faster than most treadmills go unless you're like on an expensive like one that we have in the lab so it's pretty quick he ended up moving all the way from like 60th maybe to third place and i feel like if he if we would have raced raced him he probably could have won it and maybe even set the course record but he's got another year to do that so maybe we'll maybe we'll go after that next year which would be cool for me being having my history at western um and so and then we had jared and tristan ran really well um and a couple other guys looked pretty good so it was a good day to get them all working together um we're going to do that again this weekend at our home meet have them kind of worked together more in like a workout rather than a true race and then our first like really race where we're going to get after it as a team in arkansas in two weeks and then on the girls side kira kind of went after it this week um and was pretty close to the old uh, meet record. Um, and for a freshman, that was really, really impressive. And so our assistant coach, Georgia Porter, had the record, I think two records ago, she ran at Western. And so, um, I think what was your average pace? For like 440 52. or 550, not 450, 550. <laughs> yes, 552. Um, so that was pretty solid. And she raced more or less solo. Um, a Western girl ended up breaking the meet record but she's a senior and so i feel like you know she actually last year ran the same time that kira ran this weekend so um that was really impressive especially running solo and then we had two of our other girls uh lindsey who was interviewed last time and then Alyssa, our other freshman our team is filled with freshmen and one senior which is kind of interesting um but uh lindsey and then Alyssa finished neck and neck and then we had two true freshmen finish up right behind them um, and so they are currently redshirted, but we're thinking about pulling them. And if we pull them, then we're going to be right up there with potentially qualifying for nationals, which was the ultimate goal for this year for the women's team. So, yep. Tony, uh, this week, to run at uh, home again, had a lot of success uh, at the, uh, outside of the track at home last season. Kind of a little more extra incentive. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that kind of like makes me think if I'm going to be more of like a track guy now or more of a cross country guy. But for me, going into track or cross country again, I kind of wanted to just like stick with like the keep cross country, cross country, not just train for track all year. I want to still be successful on the cross country side of things and still train like a true distance runner in a way because I feel like that really does help me when I transition to track because I have that endurance so whenever track comes around I can actually work on speed so yeah I try not to let it affect me a bunch but I try to keep the seasons separate and try to help both teams as much as I can yeah mm -hmm. your coach was mentioning a, a team of, of freshmen you're a redshirt freshman but still in that class of but yet expected and um, it's definitely pretty interesting to be still one of the younger athletes, however, being put in a captain and leadership position. Um, I think it makes me a very unique athlete in that situation that I'm still learning just as much as they are. Um, I definitely lucked out last year, given that I didn't really have to give up my freshman year. I still got to wear that singlet and I still get to fifth year. Um, so something good actually came out of COVID. Um, so I got the opportunity to really dip my toe into college running rather than just be thrown into the RMAC. Um, so being able to be a younger athlete and 
coexist and work with them and learn with them has been really neat this year. You know, we're definitely at a rebuilding tra um, year for us, which is really neat. You don't come across that very often and being able to pretty much clear the slate and try something new has been really exciting and I'm super stoked for these girls. We've got a lot of very young talent and I don't think that they even realize it yet. From like an athlete perspective, you guys both kind of mentioned last year a little bit of success and then you mentioned nationals is the, is the ultimate goal. How do you guys take what you learned last year into getting into that ultimate goal this year? Um, from what I'm taking from last year is like how well we did at, in the COVID year, which is kind of hard because like it wasn't a true year, so we couldn't really see how we would have performed with uh, all the teams have, like being there. So this year, it's just really exciting to be able to like run with those teams and run at regionals, and then that hopefully nationals. We'll see how that really goes, and we'll just take it step by step. But I'm really excited for this year because we have a lot of good guys. So yeah. Um, pretty much kind of like what Tony said, um, being able to take last year's nationals as pretty much a practice round because it wasn't a true nationals or weren't any NCAA titles, which was a little bit disappointing, but it really took the pressure off of last year's race. So it was kind of cool to just get out there and race against teams that I've never seen before that are very competitive and will be very interesting to throw in the mix when we get there. And I say if, I mean, I say when, not if, because I really think we have a shot this year. Um, so I'm really excited to see what we can do last year, having that practice round under our belt. Yeah, I mean, on the, on the guys' side, obviously we had a lot of success as a team last year, and we made it, and we ended up finishing second in the COVID nationals, um, probably like a third of the team showing up. Um, and so, you know, us and then Alabama Huntsville ended up doing really well there too, and we were at kind of the two teams that no one i'd say like no one was really heard of before in the cross country scene anyway um came up and stepped up and i think a lot of people are looking at us now like are we actually legit like we showed last year or or was it covid and so um you know i think we're we're shooting to prove that in a couple of weeks at arkansas because we're going to be racing against some big schools um the university of arkansas usually the oklahoma oklahoma state um, there's a, a lot of d1 talent there um, a lot of d2 talent um, I think Mines is going Pueblo, um, a lot of ranked teams, and so, and then a lot of cross-region teams, and so we're hoping that a lot of cross-region teams come, and then we can beat them, which will allow our region to add more teams to the national meet. Um, and so, for the men, it's just kind of proving what we did last year, which was have a lot of success, and proving that it wasn't just a fluke year. And then on the women's side, it's, I guess, doing what the men did last year, and then coming in and surprising everybody, which I think we have already done. Um, you know, last week at, at Western, we were fairly close to them, and Adams wasn't at full strength, but they still had a lot of their top girls and guys, and we, you know, held our own with them. And really, our guys kind of did, they ran it more like a workout where women raced it. Um, but we weren't too far behind Western, and I think, you know, with our young squad of girls, they're just getting better and better and better every weekend. And so, you know, by the time championship season rolls around, I think they're going to be ready to surprise some people. And then our men, it's just kind of getting them all healthy. Um, we've had a couple sicknesses roll through the team. No COVID, thankfully. It's just been some uh, sinus infections. But um, they're all looking close to healthy. And most of them are healthy. Tony had it a little bit in front of the first meet. Um, but, yeah, Arkansas is when we're looking to really go out and prove that, you know, what we did last year was not a fluke on the men's side and then on the women's side to prove that we're here and we're here to compete, so. Say, Tony, when you go into a race, okay, we're gonna make it, do this as a training race. Is it hard not to let the competitive nature take over? Kind of like, obviously it, it had to a little bit last week, but just kind of knowing that this is the plan? Yeah, I mean, I'd say so it is for sure, because Obviously, you're letting all these people go by you and like having to pull yourself back when you know you can go a certain pace to race it like an actual race. But what kind of gets me through that is my own teammates because uh, we try to do that in groups. We have certain different groups that set go out and set paces. And for example, I, our, our group went out in 520 and yeah, it's like harder to come back like that, but also it helps you find your way of racing because not everyone races a certain way so like you have to try different methods of racing to go out either a consistent pace the whole 
whole way or just go out really slow and kind of find that rhythm and then drop the paces. And for me, I feel like I, um, that's kind of my, my racing style. So I might keep that like pretty similar, just not go out as slow, just find the right pace that I need to go out. And so, yeah. Here, you're just gonna go, right? <laughs> She's the one that's gonna have more issues. <laughs> yeah, this weekend we, um, I feel bad. I'm really sorry, Shane. I've put up a little bit of a fight with how he wants this weekend to be run, but after some further discussion and explanation, I get it. This weekend is um, practicing for Arkansas and some paces that I may not be familiar with, but are definitely in my wheelhouse. So this weekend is more about starting a little bit more conservatively, whereas I prefer to run even splits rather than negative split and then really working down to that a, very, a much faster pace than I'm used to racing at and then hopefully in Arkansas just getting used to that feeling so I can go that 530 ish pace the whole way that'll be really nice I'd appreciate that <laughs> yeah so I'll just uh, go a little bit into that um, so just for both of them both their last well for Tony's last race he ended up at 455 per mile which up in Gunnison's about 8,000 feet. And so we're going to Arkansas in a couple weeks. And so realistically, his race pace at Arkansas should be that for the entire race. And so that's kind of the point of what we're doing both at Western and then this weekend is we're trying to start relatively relaxed. The girls are going to take off about 20 seconds per mile this week um, and then end at roughly what they want to be at at Arkansas just because it's, you know, you can't run that pace up here. So we're trying to get them used to at least like a mile distance of feeling that feeling that turnover. Um, Cause they may be aerobically in shape, but um, the legs are going to be moving over a lot quicker and, and it's just going to be a, you know, a bit, a bit faster. So my 550 to 530 is a big difference. And then, you know, for Tony averaging up in Gunnison, if you were to like just go even split it, he'd probably be like 510 to 515. And so, another you know 15 to 20 seconds off at sea level is what we're we're looking for down there so um yeah that's really the point of those workouts is they can dip into that sea level race so it's not a shock once we go to arkansas and then once we you know once we go to uh florida for the national championship they'll be able to rip it and won't be shocked by the the speed so Um, I think simply just the way that we are approaching this race definitely takes away some of that because it can be really intimidating being like, well, I have to defend my home turf, which is again why I was a little bit frustrated at first with how we're approaching it. But it really does help. And I think it's a really good reset race because it's really easy to get swept away and constantly, especially we didn't race very much last year. So more of that weekly, okay, we're racing, get ready, ramp it up. Um, so being able to kind of take a race to really practice and really like analyze how you run, I think definitely helps a lot. And I'm really excited to see how the younger girls fare with that. Yeah, especially for being in a sport where not you don't get many home meets. I feel like it takes off a lot of pressure with having that one home meet a year or something like that. Because I feel like you get to sleep better, wake up in your own bed, have your own food, like not worry about crappy hotel food, you know. And... <laughs> Yeah, it just takes off a lot of pressure, and just being on your home course just feels good with a lot of the fans around. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then with hotel food, it's been even worse than probably normal with COVID because it's not as – depending on where you go, you're typically going to grab and go, so it's like a muffin and a apple. And so we got to supply a little bit more um, for what we can bring. But either way, it's going to be cold breakfasts rather than what they're sometimes used to at hotels. Um, and so traveling has been a little bit different in that regard. Um, and then uh, for me, I'm just excited to gig is going to show up to this weekend. So that's, you know, for those of you who know gig, it's going to be really exciting to see him probably get, have him give a little pep talk at the beginning of the race. That'll take some edge off too. So if you've met gig, he's a, uh, he'll take the edge off. He's a, he's a funny guy. So um, yeah, having him out there is going to be awesome. Um, yeah. And then, the other, the other reason I don't want them to hammer this weekend is the race in Arkansas is on Friday, so we've got less than a week to prepare for that one, and we're going to be traveling for almost half of it. So driving out, leaving out Wednesday at noon, and driving for a couple of days, and yeah, so don't want them to be too sore before we get there. But. Question of the week, other than running, what's your favorite part of the race? 
favorite professional athlete? Uh, I have to go with Rob Gronkowski, I think. Because, I don't know, I'm from Arizona, and he went to the U of A, and just his wild side, he likes to express that a lot, and I, I just like that because he doesn't do it, like, he doesn't hide it when he does it, he expresses it a lot, and I like that. Just It shows you can have fun and be professional and be successful at the same time, so yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would say probably Simone Biles. Um, she's stepped up to the plate in expressing things that not only female athletes don't talk about, but just athletes in general. So it's been really cool to see people not only relate to her, but turn to her as a role model in and outside of athletics. Mine, probably, I don't know, I'm a big Bronco fan, so it changes all the time, so. <laughs> but I think right now I'm still I'm a little sour on the whole Philip Lindsay thing, but, so Philip Lindsay, Lindsay's still my guy, I wish he was still a Bronco, but yeah, I'll have to go with Colorado kid, Philip Lindsay.